Kiara Internet. If you saw my last video about the Quilt Guild exhibition, you'll know that that exhibition included a challenge to create a mini quilt based on the quote, winter is not a season, it's a celebration. Now, because this is the first year that we've officially celebrated Matariki as a public holiday, I knew I wanted to interpret that quote through something to do with Matariki. Matariki is the Maori name for the cluster of stars that you might know as the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters. In Aotearoa, Matariki is actually below the horizon for part of the year. It rises back up to be visible around midwinter. That first rising of the Matariki stars above the horizon marks the beginning of a new year for many Maori. It's a time traditionally marked by honouring the past by remembering those who have died, by celebrating the present, by feasting and thanking the gods for the bountiful harvest, and by looking to the future and planning the year ahead. Each of the nine stars in the Matariki cluster represent a different element of those celebrations. I spend a lot of time sketching out ideas for my quilt. I wanted to celebrate Matariki and acknowledge it as a holiday that's unique to Aotearoa and as a holiday that's deeply embedded in Te Ao Māori. But I wanted to be really careful not to be appropriative because I'm a Pākehā. Te Ao Māori is not mine to interpret. But eventually I had an idea clear in my head. I wanted to use pieces of power to represent the stars of Matariki and have them rising out of the ocean. Because here in Christchurch, we're on the East Coast, so the sun and the stars rise out of the Pacific Ocean. And it's already becoming a Matariki tradition that you go down to the beach before dawn and watch the stars rise out of the Pacific. So I had my idea, now I just had to turn it into a quilt. <laughs> Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I have a dark sky and a dark sea, and then some sunrise colours in between. I've got this piece that has a lot of the colours I want for the sunrise, so I think I'll use that. And I really want to use this fabric for the sky, because it has stars in it. But it's a bit light for that really dark overhead, so I think I'll use a black fabric at the very top of the quilt. So you get that nice progression from light on the horizon to really dark overhead, like you see at dawn. Then I'll have some blues in the sea. Ooh, this could make a really good beach. That kind of silhouette you get against the sea when it's just starting to get some colour into it. I want to have curved lines in the clouds and in the sea. So I think I'm going to do some curved improv again. So I'll need to cut some big long strips from these fabrics. Uh, these blues aren't really wide enough for what I want, but I can piece them together into long strips. I'm sure it'll look fine. There, you can hardly even see the joins. But I think I'll offset the seams a bit, just to avoid any bulk. So what I learnt from the Hoi Ho quilt is that I need to keep my curves nice and smooth and gentle. Sewing the pieces together is mostly just a matter of going slow and steady and adjusting every few stitches to keep the edges nice and aligned. It's a bit like free motion quilting really. You concentrate on keeping the bit that's actually under your needle nice and flat and let the rest of it do whatever it wants. good. It's much longer than I need it now though, so I'll cut it down to size. Now I just need to keep doing that for all the other strips. Yeah, 
even though this fabric already has the progression of sunset colours, I'm going to cut it up a bit so I can piece in the curves. I'm going to keep the horizon line straight. I mean, technically it should be a curve, but we're only looking at a little bit of the horizon, so it's basically straight. And there's my background. Now I need to trim it down a bit so that it fits within the size requirements, and then I can quilt it. I think I want to be quite literal in the quilting. So I'm going to make cloud shapes in the clouds, waves in the sea, stars in the sky, and maybe in keeping with the New Zealand theme, harakeke bushes along the shore. I found this fabric that will be perfect for the binding kind of reminds me of Punamu. In an ideal world, I'd go somewhere like Stewart Island and pick up some power shell pieces off the beach, but I'll just have to settle for these ones I bought from a craft shop. They do have the advantage though of already having the holes drilled in them. So I think what I need to do now is stick a pin through the holes to mark on the paper where I'm going to be stitching them so that they hang in the right places to form the constellation. and then I can transfer those marks to the fabric. Time to do some hand sewing, I suppose. All done, but I'm not quite finished yet. The water is looking a bit flat, and the shoreline isn't really as defined as I'd like. And it just so happens I surrendered to temptation the other day and bought myself some intense paints. So I've decided I'm going to paint on the quilt to add a bit of surf. Yeah, that's so much better. Well, I'm really pleased how that turned out. It was a bit nerve-wracking putting paint on a finished quilt because what if I ruined it? But I'm really pleased I added it because those little details of surf and stuff just make it look a little bit more like the sea. I hope you've enjoyed watching the process of designing and making this little quilt for the Matariki Challenge. Now I've just got to race off to the venue and drop off the quilt because the deadline is this afternoon. Parsnip's opinion is that she would much rather that I stay here and put the fire on for her because it's a very frosty day today. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment and I will see you next time. Ka kite anō, internet. be in the picture. Parsnips has decided to join us. <laughs>